up? Welcome back to a new So Craftastic DIY. Or if you happen to be new here, you can join the family by clicking the red subscribe button below and also the bell icon so you'll be notified every single time I post a new video, which is every Friday and Sunday. Today's video is all about scratch art. I decorated my cat or your phone case too. Also remember I have a wreck this journal series. On Sunday I actually ran over this book with my car, so if you have not seen that I'll link the video below. It was a lot of fun. I decorated a few more pages and a new video is coming up in a couple days, so stay tuned for that. Also don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you happen to like it at any point it will help this video get spread to the YouTube world that way even more people will be inspired to create beautiful art ready set let's scratch away okay ignore that I did that for this DIY you're going to need some oil pastels you can use any brand that you want Crayola, Artist Loft, any other kind. Gallery, I don't even know what gallery is. Honestly, someone sent these to me in the mail and I finally am using them. Once you've gathered all your oil pastels, then you're going to want a thick piece of paper. I'm using watercolor paper. You could use cardstock or Bristol board. You could probably use thin paper as well, but it's gonna work better on the thick because it's not going to bend and tear. Here you can see I'm coloring the paper with the oil pastel and I'm doing this as hard as I can, not hard enough to break the pastel but you want to have a fairly generous layer on there and you don't want any of the white to show through so make sure you get all the little dots white the way you apply the color doesn't really matter you can put the color spread out you can do a rainbow you can do lines you can do zigzags any way that you want as long as the entire page is covered and you don't see any white my go-to is usually some type of gradient or rainbow. So that's what I'm doing here using as many colors as I can. And I'm just switching back and forth between the two brands because they don't have the exact same colors. So that's why I got two packs at the store. I just didn't know what was inside, I guess. Here's how I did my first paper. And I also have a second one that's kind of blotchy and just has patches of colors all over. Before we get on to the next step, I want to do this kind of experiment for you guys because I feel like I'm going to get questions asking if you can use marker, if you can use pastel over pastel, so I'm going to answer your questions by showing you. I created this chart and I don't have all the possible combinations, but I did a lot. So I've divided it by what medium is used and also the brand to see if there's a difference between Crayola and Artist Loft and Gallery, just in case you guys want to know which is best. Right now I'm just setting up the page and coloring over everything or, you know, covering everything. Generally for scratch art, people use black, but you can use any color. Dark colors work best or a color contrast, so you can do black and white. So maybe you could even try white paint over black pastel and see how that turns out. And I did discover that the gallery pastels, you can actually color on top of them because they blend, so I used the other brand color on top like this. The top row, I'm using plain acrylic and brushing that on with a sponge brush. You could use a paintbrush as well. I'm putting one layer going horizontally and I'm letting that dry, which only took about five minutes or so, as long as you put it on kind of thin. And then I'm doing another layer once it's completely dry and doing that the opposite direction, which is vertical for me. And while I'm waiting for that to dry, I'm going to set up the next row here, which is adding soap to acrylic paint. I don't think there's a specific soap you have to use, just hand soap, and you want to put in a squirt or two. There's no measurement. So just mix that in with the soap, or the so <laughs> mix the soap in with the paint, I mean. And I use the end of a paintbrush for this, the non-brush part. And I'm going to repeat the same thing for the next row here. And brush it on one way, let it dry, and while I'm letting it dry, I'm just showing you the types of tools that you could use. There's tons of things. Anything that's kind of sharp that you can scratch with, kind of tiny, you know, so you can get detail. Now everything is completely dry and I'm doing the scratch test with a bamboo skewer. You could use a toothpick, like I said, anything that's kind of sharp. If you use metal, it might rip through the paper, so you may not want to do that even though I kind of showed a pin there. I mean, I, I definitely showed a pin there, but you might not want to use that. I didn't really try it. I'm not going to explain this too much I just want you guys to see how it looks as I am scratching and I did speed this footage up because I don't want you guys to be watching this for three minutes straight being like oh my gosh she's drawing zigzags with a stick and the reason that I started going scratch happy here is because the acrylic paint plain on its own with no soap actually flakes off when it shouldn't where you aren't even scratching it just flakes off 
excessively. So I think that that is a no-go. Here's a close-up of what I mean. The lines are a lot bigger than the tool that I was using, so that means that more scratched away than I wanted. Moving down to the acrylic with soap, you can see that the line's a little bit more detailed, a little thinner, so I like that way better. And the pastel over pastel is a lot thinner, so you can do even more detail with pastel over pastel, but it does mute the colors a little bit. I mentioned that I used to do this years ago back in elementary school. I did crayon over crayon. A lot of my classmates did that. So here is what that looks like. And then if you try acrylic over marker, it doesn't work at all because you have to have some sort of waxy substance or oily underneath. So oil pastel or crayon. Now that the experimentation is done, I'm choosing to use the soap with acrylic. So I've mixed that up. I've mixed enough to put over this sheet of paper and the other. I'm putting one thin coat on and then letting it dry. And then I put another thin coat on going the other way. And they are both done now because I wanted to just speed through that part and show you the decorating. The first idea I have is to use the scratch board as a greeting card decoration. You could just paint on the greeting card, but honestly I had this idea as I was making the video and I had already painted the sheet. Plus then the card might get kind of warped from the paint being wet and everything. So I figure why not just glue it on. I trimmed away the excess because the scratch sheet was bigger than the card front. Now that's all done and I'm going to create this really adorable cupcake because I make so many cupcakes on my channel. I'm going to make it a birthday card and you can see that I actually used light pencil sketch to make a template for, not really a template, just a guide so I don't mess up my cupcake completely by doing it freehand. And the scratching was really, really, really smooth at first, but then we get to this part and oh, oh, oh my gosh, that was a rip in the paper because guess what I didn't do? I did not wait for the glue to dry completely underneath. So if you do glue the scratch board to the front of anything, make sure the glue is completely, completely dry so the paper isn't fragile and, you know, it won't rip. But don't worry, I did fix this, but here I'm just showing you how I added details to the cupcakes. Um, to the, the, the single cupcake, one cupcake, okay. I put lines for the cupcake wrapper and I put little tiny dashes for the sprinkles. Once I had all the sprinkles complete, I went and I fixed this area. I also wrote happy birthday, but you can see that. I put a candle, I'm bad at explaining today. Oh my goodness. So anyway, you can see I just took some more of the paint mixture and I also colored in the area of the paper that ripped and you can barely tell that anything happened. So if your line gets too wide or just you do something you don't wanna do, cover it back up with paint and it'll look like you didn't mess up. Happy birthday to anyone whose birthday is today, by the way, and happy unbirthday to all of the rest of us. The next thing I'm gonna show you is just a simple piece of artwork. You could use this as a card front as well, but I measured the center of the paper will found it with a ruler so the dot was already there and then I measured like an inch away from the dot in four different areas so it makes it cross and I did that because I wanted to put the circle in the center and then trace around that you can also just scratch around it with your tool right away but I was worried that it would move so here I am just scratching over the pencil line I made and this is going to be a mandala or do you pronounce it mandala? I don't even know. I didn't look this up and I feel like people have told me in the past like on my drawing with makeup video and I didn't make a mental note to change the way that I pronounce it so I don't know. I put some tiny circles inside and another circle inside that and then another circle inside that and filled that in. And then here my hand has blocked what I'm doing but I put kind of a flower petal shape all around Around. and then that's all the footage I did of me actually creating this because it was a lot of repetition a lot of my hand getting in the way and a lot of me moving the page around because that's how I create things I move the page like every single line or shape I make I move the page and reposition it so I usually have a hard time doing full drawing videos because I move so much and it's just hard to stay in focus that way Plus it's a lot of footage, like this took an hour or something. So that would have been a lot to edit through. 
I don't know how people do it. This is my cat air foam case. I got it from Amazon a long time ago, back when I did the hollow foam case video that featured cat cases. All I did for this was take the insert from my phone, and if you don't have one, you just need to like trace your phone case and cut out that circle make sure it fits inside you just want a piece of paper do all the same steps and then you just scratch any design you want i decided to do swirls it looks kind of like branches just kind of a fantasy nighttime scene i guess abstractness on the phone case and here's what it looks like now honestly i'm gonna switch back to the hollow glitter because it's really really pretty and it makes me happy when i look at it but i really like this one as well let me know which DIY from this video you like the best by leaving a comment below. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and remember if you did to give it a big thumbs up to let me know and help the video get spread around. It really helps out so I would appreciate it. A new Wreck This Journal video is coming up on Sunday. I can't wait for you all to see it. I mean I didn't drive over it with the car again but I made some really pretty pages so stay tuned. The playlist is listed below so you can see the first three videos if you are not caught up yet. Also, if you want to follow me on social media, I use my cat phone case while I'm on there, seriously. You can check my links to Twitter, Facebook, Craft, blah, blah, <coughs> to uh, tweet and snap and go on Instagram and everything. You can check out my Facebook and Crafty Amino as well. Links are in the description box below. I hope you guys have a great rest of the day and I'll see you back here for a new video very soon. Bye.